Okay, so this Raspberry Pi 5 has been running videos now since I got up and uh, it's naked at the moment. There is no active or passive cooling on it at all. So obviously it's going to get very hot. Uh, it's running at 1080 60. But uh, I'm going to do a test to see how well the DeSalvo case, which is a very special case, solid aluminium case, looks like no other. And uh, I really love DeSalvo Systems cases. They are really a piece of art. But uh, let's have a look at the screen and show you how long this is running and what sort of temperature we've got to. So my Pi is running currently at 84 degrees. It's got to a temperature of 86, but as you can see, it is running very hot at the moment. What it does is it thermal throttles, so when it gets to a certain temperature, it will lower the clock speed so it doesn't exceed, uh, well, in this case, 86 degrees. And if I run near fetch, we can see how long it's been running. So one hour and 13 minutes. So let's shut this down and uh, we'll put it inside the DeSalvo case and see how much difference it makes. Before I put it in the case, let's just check the Wi-Fi strength. So this is my remote access operating system with VNC. And if I hover over here, it will tell me the strength of the Wi-Fi. It was on 58% just now. It says 60% at the moment at 58%. So between 58 and 60%. So we'll see how much being inside a case affects it. Obviously it is going to affect it. Uh, it doesn't really bother me because I always use ethernet, but I know people ask quite a lot. Okay, so in the box I had uh, two pages of instructions, uh, a warning that the case can get hot, especially if it's overclocked. The case temperature can be the same as the CPU. Now that generally wouldn't happen, but I guess in a really hot environment, if you are overclocking, um, then you don't want to be touching the top of the case. I've always found they've been fine in the past uh, on the Pi 4. You'd definitely be able to touch the case. But the Pi 5 does run hotter. I'm not planning to overclock in this case. I would use active cooling for overclocking. And for most things, the Pi 5 just doesn't need it. I do it for fun. So we also get uh, a bag of a few things in here. So we've got an Allen key. We've got some rubber feet, which is great. Uh, we've got some thermal paste and also some thermal pads. And the reason for the thermal pads are because when you're using it on the PMIC, which is this part here, which is the bit that deals with power on the Pi, power management, you can see I've got thermal paste in here. I can't get it out. I've tried with isopropyl. I mean, I'm not worried about it, but it is, uh, it is in amongst the components. So obviously with the thermal pad over there, I'm not going to have that issue. And then I can use the thermal paste on the key components that it's going to touch. And what does it touch? So let's pull this apart with the Allen key. So that's the last Allen key bolt. So here are the two parts uh, that are going to touch the Pi. Oh, it does look really nice. All the writing and everything on it. Raspberry Pi 5. And it's got uh, the revision and so on on there. Such a nice piece of kit. So the bits that it's going to touch is the power management integrated circuit and the CPU and GPU. So we can see here that when it goes together, those two are going to be touching. So let's put that thermal pad on first. Pretty much in place and I need to take off the protective cover. I've already done that on the other side. There we go. Well, that could be put on a bit better than that. And we can drop it into here. So this side must be for the SD card slot. And the power button. So that uses the mic switch that's on the Pi. And we've got a spare one of those. We've got four of these tiny little screws to screw the Pi down into the base. Okay, that's all four of those in place, so nothing's moving around. Now we need that thermal paste. I'm actually going to use, I've got some already, so I'm going to keep this one. And I'm going to use this one, which uh, I've been sent before. Pop a little tiny bit on there. It's always either too much or not enough or in the wrong shape or whatever. But I appreciate the comments. Let me just pop this on top. I can feel it touching the thermal paste. So let's secure that with the Allen key bolts. And pop the rubber feet on. They go over the bolts on these cases. And always keep these because you can make four little rubber feet for some other cases. It still works fine. So that feels really solid on my desk uh, with those rubber feet. The mic switch is really nicely accessible. SD card slot. Let's see, 
Well, that's quite nice actually, because it sometimes you get cases where you can not put the SD card in exactly right and it gets lost in the case. With this, there is nowhere for it to go. It's so well machined that there's, there's actually no room for error. Yeah, impressed with that. All the slots look nice. Uh, these are all nice and flush with the outside as well. Some cases also protrude a little bit too much and it can affect some little micro HDMI adapters. Yeah, that's lovely. And here it is next to its cousins. So this was the very first one I was sent. It was one of the first products I was ever sent by a supplier. And uh, yeah, I really love it. I really love the logo on the bottom. And it looks like the machining is, is definitely, I mean, I don't know about aluminium machining, but it looks like it's a much better quality grade. Uh, so you can see it's very, very neat. Uh, I think it's probably similar to this. No, it's still, it still looks neater. Uh, than the Phineas case as well so I guess he's got newer equipment over time and I mean things like the writing on there where it says to salvo systems and the five and how it's kind of etched in there it just looks amazing but I really still love the Phineas case uh, and I love the design of that as well with the DeSalvo logo and these nice thick fins this still is one of the best looking ones not as effective but it's such a cool looking case and because it's the original, I really like it as well. Anyway, let's get this plugged in because I want to put it on and leave it on while I go to work. So it's on for a good amount of time. Okay, so I've left it for quite some time. I've been to work and come back and uh, the maximum temperatures are really impressive, 46 degrees, continuously playing YouTube. Not sure why it's not playing one of my videos because I left it playing a playlist, but whatever YouTube does with that. Uh, so let's have a look at NeoFetch. Uh, so let's see, this has been running for 5 hours 49 minutes. And uh, I'll show you how it runs. My desk is in a cupboard. So I can basically shut all this away. And uh, it, is, it is open at the top, um, but it is in a cupboard. And you can feel that it's warmer inside that cupboard. And uh, it's actually quite a sunny day today. So I'm really impressed with that. It is doing a great job and uh, definitely is, uh, and it's not that hot to touch. So 46 degree is the CPU. This doesn't feel that hot at all. So I left it playing for a bit longer and uh, it's now six hours, eight minutes. So it's been on more than four times the amount of time it was on before when it had no cooling on it. And uh, it's achieved pretty much half the temperature. So. I think that's very impressive. I think what we'll do is a little benchmark test. So if I go into docs, if you've downloaded my version of KD Plasma in the documents folder, there is a stress test in here. Here we go. And this maxes it out. So let's just copy that in and just see how much we can raise it by running this maybe once or twice. So let's paste that in, hit return. And we can see at the top, 100%. And you should watch this temperature rise. So yeah, already 47. It's also playing the video at the same time. I'll just leave that going. And the beauty of this is that it is completely silent. So there's no moving parts. Uh, there is a completely silent computer. And yet it has the ability to keep it actually pretty cool, even under stress. Okay, so that's finished. Let's do that test again. Still only got to 47. And it is quite warm in here. Um, so it's warm from the outside temperature and the sun shining in. I want to see on the second temperature gauge, uh, it is saying it's got up to 53 in total. I usually only look at the top one. But yeah, 53 is the highest it's got to. What's amazing is the video seems to be playing absolutely fine while it's doing this. I mean, obviously it's, um, it's showing more static screens and stuff, but I can't see any, any frame skipping or anything while it's doing a stress test. I wouldn't have expected that. So that's finished. So 48 degrees and 53 degrees. I mean, just super impressive. Right, let's shut it down and uh, possibly bring us back down to earth by testing the Wi-Fi and see how much difference that makes. Okay, so it's connected to the Wi-Fi automatically. And if I hover over it, so we've got 48%. We had two values before and I was checking it. 47, so 47 and 48. And let's just see if it launches the PSP video 
yeah, the Wi-Fi is working. Uh, obviously, it is a bit weaker, but uh, to be honest, I wasn't necessarily expecting to work at all. Yeah, 45 now. Really like the um, power button lighting up. Uh, that goes red when you turn the Pi off. But also really like the SD card slot. It's the best SD card slot I've had because there's no gaps or anything. It can only go in one place, so you can't lose it inside the case. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.